different fruits in it. Uh, this is our multivitamin, the orange one. It's a lemon flavor. This is a kind of a raspberry cherry kind of a flavor. This one is our lemon. It's our it's our uh, multivitamin. It's got 56 different nutrients in it. it. Tastes really natural, and I like granola, so it tastes good. And I'll try the juice. Uh, and it's fresh. <laughs> Very rejuvenating. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to thank everybody for coming to uh, this uh, talk, 30 Days to a Healthier You. And uh, so I just want to make a confession to all of you guys. So before I started preparing, I, st I found this book, Radical Honesty. And I started reading the book, you know, in preparation for today's talk. So I want you guys to rate me, OK? If you feel I'm doing good as far as radical honesty, give me a thumbs up. If you think I failed the test, I deserve a tomato, thumbs down, OK? So I'm, I'm going to test you guys. We'll, just, we'll warm you up to see, to just to test your, the honesty scale here. I don't know if you guys have seen a sheep Shrek before, uh, but he's actually trying to be like this guy. He's trying to impersonate this guy. So if I said to the sheep Shrek, OK, Mr. Sheep Shrek, you're doing a great job of impersonating this guy. You can pack your bags. You, you can write your ticket to Hollywood. All right, guys, rate me. What would that be? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah, that's a thumbs down. <laughs> All right. So you guys have seen this before. You know, all the material that we present today uh, is for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. So we don't want it to replace the opinions of your health care provider. Uh, and of course, if you have any kind of emergency, we encourage you to call 911. So we have to put that in. This is where I practice. That's Santa Barbara, California. I'm an ER physician. I'm Len Jackson. Um, and just a little plug, I want to encourage every, every, each and every one of you, tune in to our radio broadcast every Saturday, 2 p.m. on KHVH. We tackle a different health and wellness topic each, each week. Um, and a little plug for colorectal cancer. I know this isn't about that. This is more about alternative medicine. But I, the reason I want to put this plug in, um, I've given a few talks on colorectal cancer. Screening, my friends, saves lives. Screening saves lives. And that's about the extent of what I want to say about this. Um, and starting early, I don't know if you guys have ever heard or seen a, a colon fun gym. They're starting kids earlier these days. And so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All righty. So guys, as with everything, attitude is everything. I just want to start premise with that because Attitude is, very, is everything, and it's very easy to, to take a lecture like this because we're presenting topics in a very easy format and think, okay, it's too easy. But attitude is everything. This is a, a, this is a, a picture of, I guess, Jesus healing at the pool, John 5. What's interesting here is this man had been paralyzed for many, many, many years. Now, Jesus could have just snapped a finger and said, you're well. Or he could have just spoken a command and said, go ahead and get running. But what he does is very interesting, my friends. He asks the man, do you want to be well? 
And so that's the big question. You know, sometimes, like with the colorectal cancer, I'll tell patients, okay, you gotta get your screening. Oh, Dr. Jackson, I can't do that. I'm too busy, I've got this, this, this. But do you wanna be well? Okay, you, you know, you, you, there's some easy weight loss techniques that you can implement into your daily routine. Oh, but Dr. Jackson, you know, the kids have this and this and this, I can't do that. But the question, my friends, do you want to be well? So I just wanted to start with that. This is a 30-day challenge that uh, I want to extend to each and every one of you. I don't know if you've ever been a part of a challenge before, uh, but this is a 30-day challenge, and we're going to make this as fun as we possibly can. So 30 days is just the right amount of time, my friends. You can either add a desirable activity or trait for 30 days, such as biking to work, or you could eliminate one. For example, you could say, no more sugar, no more caffeine, no more Facebook, Twitter for, for 30 days. And I just wanted to start off with, just so we all have a roadmap. The human body, think of it as a team, right? So the cardiovascular system here works with the respiratory system, which works with the digestive system, which works with the nervous system. They all work in concert. So if any one of those systems is off, the other parts of the system are going to feel it, okay? So we want to come at this from a standpoint of stress since this is a mind-body conference. Stress can have a major impact on your health. What we want is for each one of you to be here in peace and in harmony. All of these things that we're mentioning here can affect your peace and your harmony. So what determines whether or not you're in this state, which is harmony, or in this state, which is stress. It's all of these external factors that we were talking about. They can either contribute to your harmony or they can contribute to your stress. So during this 30-day challenge, I want to encourage each and every one of you to move towards health, to move towards peace, to move towards harmony. So, let me question you guys. What if you could lose 500 calories each day, right? In a week, that would be 3,500 calories, right? That's a pound. But, so starting off at walking, let's say you walked for an hour, let's say you walked for four miles an hour, you're gonna burn about 420 calories. But on the other hand, if you were to run or jog, let's just say, and you were going six miles per hour for an hour, now you're talking about 750 calories a day, which is about one and a half pounds a week. So one of the things, I'll, I'll just pause for just a moment. One of the things we talked about on my radio program last Saturday was goal setting. So the biggest mistake that a lot of people make is making the goal too high. We recommend that you start off at incremental steps. So I don't want you to be scared by that picture of a person running you just saw. We're not expecting you to run 12 miles. Start with whatever you can and then slowly build up. So even if, even if that's just running a block, that's totally fine. You know, as you keep with it, you're gonna continue to climb up the ladder and soon before you know it, you'll be, you'll be jogging a mile, running four miles, whatnot. So don't, don't let that scare you. That was just for illustrative purposes. Okay, so we just dealt with exercise here. Uh, what we're going to do is dive into diet. Now, diet's kind of a little bit trickier. It's kind of easier to pick up walking than it is to, to eliminate foods that you love. So, now, the first I want to talk about is fast foods. If you are able to eliminate fast foods for 30 days, you're going to do yourself a lot of good because there's a lot of sugar, there's a lot of fats, and there's a lot of what we call free radicals. Free radicals are the things that can lead to cancer. So if, a lot of calories too. So if you're able to, to eliminate fast food for 30 days, you're gonna do yourself a big favor. Now, if you can eliminate soda pop, just two cans a day, you're gonna save yourself 300 calories. Now, I know I have to tread carefully here. Soda pop is very personal and I've had had people say, Dr. J, don't touch my Mountain Dew, <laughs> don't touch my Coca-Cola. It's very, very personal, and, I, and I, I totally get that. But if you're able to reduce or eliminate this, remember, soda pop can cause weight gain, it can lead to diabetes, and all sorts of other things. I'll tell you guys a story. I once had a patient, we'll call her Leslie. Leslie used to drink about eight to nine cans of soda pop a day. 
I was able to convince her to go down to one can a day. But one time I saw her in, my, in the office and uh, she had gained weight. And I said, Leslie, I said, are you drinking soda pop again? She said, Dr. J, she almost had tears in her eyes. She said, Dr. J, my cat made me do it. I said, your cat made you do it? I said, Leslie, everybody on earth knows that cats do not drink Coca-Cola. I said, how could your cat possibly make you drink Coca-Cola? And then she brought that in. What could I say, my friends? Cheers, right? <laughs> but she also has ice cream with her cat as well. So. so we would recommend that if you're able to reduce, cut down, or eliminate some of these empty calorie foods, you're going to do yourselves a great favor. And while you're at it, if you could add something, this is our NutriBerry antioxidants. And that is, a, it'll give you not only a boost of energy, but it'll also give you a whole burst of antioxidants. It's got an antioxidant rating of about 3,000. It's, it's a proprietary blend. It's got strawberries, raspberries, pomegranates, 12 other fruits. And it also, as a bonus, contains two grams of fiber, which is good for your digestive tract. And then, of course, our total support, that's our multivitamin. It's an advanced formula for both children and adults. It's got about 56 nutrients, which will support your brain, cardiovascular system, bone, immune, et cetera. Now, I would also recommend that you go for a balanced meal over, the third, over 30 days. I would recommend trying to increase, this is where a lot of people kind of fall, I would recommend trying to increase your fruits and vegetables if you can. This is quinoa, it's, it's a very healthy grain. Um, and then, of course, your salmon, that gives you your omega-3s. And remember, omega-3s are protective of the heart. That looks good. <laughs> Makes you want to have lunch right now. Yeah, <laughs> now, nuts and fibers. Believe it or not, my friends, these also have a lot of nutrition value as well. You're going to be surprised at how much they have. So, first of all, you guys, have you guys heard of unsaturated fats? polyunsaturated, monounsaturated, those can help you with lowering your, your bad cholesterol. And then omega-3 fatty acids help prevent heart disease as well. And you've heard of those. Those are in the, found in the salmon and things like that that we just saw. Now, the fiber has many different benefits. First, it can prevent colon cancer, all right? It can help prevent colon cancer. Then it can also help prevent diabetes. It is also protective of your heart as well. Uh, and by lowering cholesterol. Vitamin E can help you as well by, by lowering the plaque buildup in your coronary arteries. Uh, and finally, plant sterols. I don't know if you guys realize that, but in foods such as orange juice, margarine, they actually put plant sterols in it for these very reasons. They've got, the, it gives you the health benefits. So it's like a supplement that they add. All right, here's another product that we would recommend to you guys. These are our energy bars. Um, and these are, th this brand is organic oats. It also has five grams of fiber, and it's got blueberries. Blueberries are, are an excellent antioxidant. Best of all, guys, only 186 calories if you're trying to lose weight. So it can serve as a, a meal replacement. And then, of course, our almond sunrise bars. These are loaded with almonds. And just as we were talking about before, the benefits of nuts, you're going to get those, the heart protection. Uh, uh, and then it's also got cherries in it, which have an antioxidant effect, whoops, and uh, 10 grams of protein. So if you're a runner in the morning or you're a cyclist, you're going to get a burst of energy from the protein that's in there. All right, so we talked about diet, now lifestyle. So here's where we want each and every one of you. Can you see how peaceful this person looks? She looks like she's in the Zen. Her whole lifestyle drives her peace. We talked about how peace is influenced by a number of different external factors. And so you can see that her whole lifestyle is supporting this peace. So some, of, some lifestyle habits that we have can contribute to our lack of peace. So for example, smoking. Everybody knows that smoking can cause lung cancer. As I was giving in my cancer talk about a month ago, it can also cause other types of cancer, like breast cancer, like colon cancer, like stomach cancer. So can you see that if you were to have a health problem that arose from smoking, how that's going to impact your peace? 
that's going to impact your harmony. Um, smoking can also lead to heart attack, believe it or not. And uh, it, it can cause lung problems, COPD. So if you want an alternative to smoking, why not for 30 days try hypnosis? Hypnosis works. Many years ago, I was studying in England, and I had a friend who was a smoker. And a hypnotist actually came to the college and was doing a performance on stage. And so we all convinced this person to go up on stage and try it out. And so the hypnotist worked her through you know, the various routines and convinced her that she doesn't smoke, she doesn't like smoking, and she never smoked. Well, guess what? Afterwards, we all tested it. We said, we'll call her Jacelyn. Jacelyn, here's a cigarette. Do you want to smoke? She said, no, I don't smoke. We were all shocked. So hypnosis can work. I believe, though, you have to continue to get treatments of hypnosis for, for, for continued effect. Uh, because it, I think it does wear off after a while. But it, it, it is a viable alternative. OK, alcohol. Alcohol is another big problem. And a lot of people turn to alcohol because they need peace. Sometimes they want to feel more relaxed in a social setting. Or they want to escape the everyday life. Uh, so anyway, alcohol can actually lead to blood pressure elevation. It can lead to stroke. It can lead to liver problems. Uh, and it can actually, believe it or not, lead to cancers as well. Um, so if you are looking for an alternative to alcohol, why not try kava, you know, kava tea? Kava has a very relaxing effect. And it may give you that relaxing feeling that you have in social situations. It may give you that relaxing feeling that you need to have at home. Now, what if you drive a lot? What if you're constantly in your car and you don't have time to exercise? You're constantly going from place to place to place to place to place. And it seems like the world is passing you by because you're constantly doing something. Well, why not, for the next 30 days, try bicycling to work or to your friend's house or to the corner store? Now, I know here in Oahu that's kind of difficult because traffic can sometimes be very, very bad. So I would, I would, I, yes, I would, I, would, I would recommend caution with this idea. OK, so we talked about lifestyle. Now, what does chronic stress do? Chronic stress can lead to fatigue. It can lead to insomnia. You, you, you'll find yourself feeling a little bit more irritable. Uh, you know, because you don't have the sleep, you feel uh, depressed. You have high blood pressure uh, and even heart disease. So if you recognize that your life is a little bit overstressed, why not, for the next 30 days, try meditation a little bit each day? How many have tried meditation before? Yeah, try meditation each day. That can help you to feel a little bit more relaxed. Or how about swimming? Do we have any swimmers in the group? All right. Yeah, swimming each day can actually help you to bust the stress cycle and, and, uh, and uh, improve your cardiovascular. All right, and then the next thing that I want to bring out is that healing community, healing community. A lot of times, healing occurs in groups. You guys have heard of Alcoholics Anonymous. That's an example of a healing community. Everybody in the group supports one another, gives advice to one another. But it doesn't, even, it doesn't have to be a, a group like that. It could just be your circle of friends. It could be family member. But that's going to help you as well establish a state of wellness. So here at uh, Harvesting Wellness, we have a mentoring program. It's Power Thinking for Success. So it's a little bit different than Alcoholics Anonymous in that we encourage you we encourage you to reach out and grab a hold of success, to stretch yourself, to be the best that you can be. Buddha said, what we think we become, that is so true. Your thought life is very, very, very important. So you want to fill your, your mind with positive thinking, positive thoughts. You know, Instead of saying, oh, I don't know if I can do this, say to yourself every day in the mirror, I can do this. Instead of saying, oh my goodness, the odds are against me, say to yourself, you know what, I know I can beat the, the odds. I know I can reach out, grab hold, lay hold of that, which I'm dreaming of. Now, I just wanted to give a little plug. My wife produced a song. She's got a friend. So this kind of ties in with healing community. She's got a friend in the Philippines who has cancer, uh, breast cancer. And so she produced this song. It's, it's featuring Thomas Bracioli. Uh, we encourage each and every one of you to check the song out. It's available in stores. So. 30 days, as we mentioned, my friends, is the right amount of time 
for you to pick up a habit or for you to drop a bad habit. So remember, for any success plan, each little step counts. To, the key is being focused. And so with Harvesting Wellness, we're committed to helping each and every one of you lay hold of your dreams, whether it's in, in your wellness, whether it's in your relationships, when it's in your finances. We encourage each and every one of you to take advantage of our website at www.harvestingwellness.com. We've got a lot of the different diseases there that, that, that give, it, that give uh, uh, advice on, on different ways that they're treated. We've got a lot of wellness things on there, like weight loss, like exercise, uh, and even relational tips as well. Um, we also put our radio program there so you can listen to any one of the episodes. They talk about health and wellness each week. So again, we're committed to your success. We're committed to a healthier you. And we know that it, together we can eliminate cancer, heart disease, uh, diabetes, stroke, and all of these diseases one person at a time, one person at a time. And with that, I'd like to take any questions that you guys might have. What channel are you on? Because I think I've heard you. KHVH, 8.30 a.m. Yeah, I've heard you. Yeah, we're 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock every Saturday. And if you, if you have any suggestions of things you'd like to hear, feel free to, to, to write us and let us know of any topics. But we try to tackle a different topic each time. And it can be diverse. We actually had an author and speaker on uh, a couple weekends ago who talked about bullying. And we feel that that you know, relates to healthcare as well because a lot of the children that are bullied, they end up you know, staying home from school. Uh, you know, it has some psychological consequences, not only to them, but to the parents and even to the teachers, everybody's affected. So we handle topics as diverse as that. You know, uh, we even one time had Snorkel Bob on talking about water safety to everybody you know, in, our, in our waters. So uh, feel free to, to write us if you have a, a topic that's burning that you'd like to hear about and we're game. We, we, we try to put anything and everything that, has to, that even remotely touches on wellness on the show. Any other questions? We didn't really go into... Is that, is that your name there? Is that you? Oh no, this, I, I wish I could have written this book. No, 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 oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, let me... Uh, oh my God, what's wrong with that cat? <laughs> I think he had one soda pop too many. That was just a joke, right? Yeah, that was just a joke. So I'll put my... Uh, So this is me right here. And one of, one of our hopes with Harvesting Wellness, because you know, I'm in the ER and we see a lot, of, uh, a lot of cases come in, and we just want to try to see if we can prevent some of those cases from coming in, because really, a lot of it is preventative. You know? So we see a heart attack come in. That's, folks, what we talked about here earlier about exercising, diet, all of those things can help prevent heart attack and stroke. So if, uh, if, if a lot of effort is placed on the front end, we can prevent seeing you guys here. And so that's the whole, the, the real whole purpose of uh, Harvesting Wellness and the, well, and the website is to really get people healthy so that they, don't, they can live a long time, they can grab onto their dreams and goals. Do you practice out of California? Yes. So I, no, I, we live here, but I just go once a month. So I'm there for about a week to 10 days, and I help them out. And then I'm home with my family the rest of the time. <laughs> I like your radio show. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Any other questions? Any, you can just, it doesn't even have to do with what we talked about here. Maybe you had a question on something else. I'll try my best to answer it. Beautiful question. Did everybody hear her question just now? If not, I'll, I'll rephrase what she said. Everybody hear completely what she said? What, what she's wondering is, she, she used to swim, and she said, uh, for whatever reason, she, it kind of tailed off. And she wants to get back into exercising and swimming, and she's wondering what the best way to do it is. She, she's worried that if she does too many things at one time, she might not get back on track. So here's the answer to that. It depends on, you've got to know yourself, and it depends on you. What, and, and here's what I mean by that. If you're the type of person that one activity kind of bores you, what we recommend is rotating them. So for example, you know, a person who, who likes doing a lot of different things, we would say, okay, start off with swimming, and then maybe do cycling, come back to swimming, and then maybe do weightlifting, that kind of a thing. But on the other hand, if you're, if you're the type of person that likes to focus 
on one thing, then you're better off just starting off with one thing. And, and the best way to do it is to start off small and then work your way up. Because if you, if you give yourself a goal of, okay, I'm going to swim 20 laps, you know, three times a week, gosh, that's going to be hard, right? If you've, if you've been off swimming for a while. And if you aren't able to do it, you become discouraged. And then you're more likely to give the goal up. We had a show on, no, on New Year's resolutions. And there's a surprising statistic. More than 50% of people by, 50, by, by February have dropped their New Year's resolutions. And so the big reason for that is that the, the, their expectation is too high. But if you bite off manageable chunks at a time, you're more likely to succeed. So let's go back to the swimming example. Maybe you just want to swim one lap. Or, you know, we could even get more, more basic than that. Maybe you just want to get in the pool and wait around on the first day just to get back into the swing of it. And then maybe you say, okay, on day two, I'll, I'll walk half the length of the pool. And then maybe th day three, okay, I'll try to swim half the length. You, you can make the challenge accordingly. But that's going to get you to the point where each time you go, you're succeeding. And remember, the goal is you want to set yourselves up for success. You want to set yourselves up for success because success feeds success. And it gets you excited. So if you're able to swim, let's just say, a quarter of the length, now, you've got, you, now you go home thinking, wow, I did it. I did it. I said I'm going to go out to the pool. I'm going to swim a quarter length. You did it. And the next time, maybe you can swim a little bit, a little bit further. And that's how, you, how you, you're going to be able to sustain and, and reach your goal by little chunks slowly climbing up the ladder. Great question. Thank you for that. Excellent question. Did everybody hear Danica's question? Her question was, how big a role does mindset play in, in, in anything? It plays a very, very, very big role. I didn't put this up in, on, on, in, this, in this talk, and I wish I, I wish I could have. There was a lady who uh, was a, uh, a sales rep with Mary Kay. Okay, and uh, she was actually really good. What, 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 the reason why she ended up doing Mary Kay was because her son had heart disease. He was born with heart disease, and so she wanted a job. She used to teach. She wanted a job where she could actually be at home and be with her son. And so she did Mary Kay part-time because she recognized the family needed her, her added income. You know, they couldn't survive without her working. So she did Mary Kay. What she didn't realize was that she was going to be very good at selling Mary Kay. She quickly rose the ranks. Her dream was to be a national sales representative. Okay? So when her time for promotion came, she was very disappointed. She was very disappointed because the, the upper management told her, and again, I apologize, guys. Maybe I should have included that in this lecture as well. It was in a different lecture. But anyway, when her time for promotion came, the, the management told her, we're sorry. You're an excellent rep. You've set all kinds of records. Because she did. She set all kinds of records. But what we are looking for is leaders who can lead leaders. They said, the problem is, is that everybody below you is too dependent upon you. They're not being trained in becoming leaders themselves. So when she got that rejection, there, was, there were many options she could have taken, right? She could have quit. She could have quit completely. She could have gone to another company. But she didn't do it. What she did was very interesting. She changed the way she thought about the situation. She said, she took it as a challenge. She said, hmm. Raising leaders who lead leaders. She took a year off, guys, and she researched that. Raising leaders who lead leaders. She, she took a year, she studied that, and then when she came back, she was excellent. She was excellent. Now, that applies to your medical conditions. Let's say you've got diabetes. You're given the diagnosis. You know, you go to your doctor's office, and he says, you know, I've got grave news. You've got diabetes. There's a couple of options. You could say, oh, doc, I'm going home. I don't want to hear it, right? Or you could take the medicines with you home and not take any of them. Or you could do like Karen did. You know, this was the national sales rep person of Mary Kay. You could do like she did. You could decide, hey, you know what? I got this diagnosis of diabetes. Maybe I need to think about this in a different way. Maybe there's things that I can do 
Maybe there's, 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 there's sources, there's research, there's, you know, and you, you go, you, you, you question your doctor, you collaborate with your doctor, and you find other ways, because there's many ways to roam. You know, so with anything in healthcare, it all starts in your mind and how you approach it. Maybe it's your blood pressure. Okay, you've got a diagnosis of high blood pressure, but your story does not end there. Your story does not end there. Maybe you've had a heart attack. Okay, but your story does not end there. How are you thinking about your disease? What ways are you thinking you, know, you might be able to, 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 to better manage it, better, better, better uh, uh, strengthen your, your system, better in, you know, optimize your, your wellness? You know, have you thought about these things? And so it all begins in your mind, how you approach it. You know, if you say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to beat this blood pressure, I'm going to do, I'm going to research, I'm going to educate myself on it, I'm going to collaborate with my doctor, I'm going to try every different, you know, th that's the way you beat it. So yes, absolutely, mindset works. Mindset works. Now Danica had a question on pain medicines, and that's probably a whole talk in and of itself. Um, they are overused in our society, you know, um, we, we as doctors prescribe them too often. And a, a lot of that is psychological, you know, part of it, you know, part of pain is psychological, part of it is very, very real. So I don't want to minimize, you know, the pain that, and suffering that people are going through. Uh, but, you know, there is a psychological component is the answer to that. Any other questions? All right. Well, I guess on that note, we will conclude today's lecture. Thank you guys. You were a wonderful audience. And, you know, if you guys have any, any questions, you can feel free to stop by our booth, any that we didn't answer here for you, uh, and ask away. Thanks so much for coming. Well, the reason why I came here was because at my age, I'm very conscious of my health. So as I sat down, I found the presentation very pleasant. Uh, uh, looking for ways to improve my health. And uh, the doctor gave a little bit of everything. It's very balanced and uh, kind of reminded me of different aspects of my health. And so in the end, to me, it was very inspiring. I felt good about it. And uh, it, it might trigger for me to exercise again. <laughs> yes, I thought he did an excellent presentation because he talked about ways to improve your life. And some of the highlights of his presentation were on a positive thinking, a yoga, um, nutrition, eating right, and taking a positive approach to life.